Welcome to the introductory series of training videos for SOLIDCAM. This video's topic is drilling operation in the turning or mill turn module. So in this video, we'll be talking about the drilling operation that you would use on a simple lathe, uh, where basically the part is in the rotary, it is revolving, and the tool is in the turret. It is not uh, rotating, not revolving. Uh, so for live tooling, we will also cover that in this video, uh, but generally live tooling will be covered by the drilling module from the milling set of operations. So to cover the, the drilling toolpath in the milling set, I would refer you to the, the introductory to milling series where we cover the drilling operation. So let's talk about drilling on a lathe. So to get to the drilling operation in the turning module, you'll go to solid cam turning, and you can see that we have the drilling up here. Also, I have an operation I've already added in here. So let's take a look at this one right here. And to add that drilling operation immediately after my facing, even though I have a whole list of operations here, you can just right click on one of the toolpaths, and by right clicking on a toolpath, you'll add an operation immediately after. In turning operations, we always have the geometry tool, the levels, and technology. Now, that's a little different here in drilling because in the drilling operation in the milling, uh, in the uh, lathe or mill turn module, you're only really drilling down the center line. So in terms of geometry, there is none. You are only working under whatever corner system you want and you're doing a center line drill. You're just really just drilling right down the center. So in this case, there is no geometry. Under tool, I can go to select, and I've already defined a one-inch drill, but uh, you can define your own tools you're planning to use here, use here countersink drill, uh, special insert drills, whatever you like. Uh, to create turning tools or milling tools, I would refer you to the creating milling tools, creating turning tools videos in our uh, intro series. So I'm just going to use this one-inch drill for now. Okay, And then obviously, fees and speeds under your control in the data tab. Under levels, even though we're doing a drilling, we still have the same sort of turning operation manager workflow. The levels is just going to be the safety distance. So this is how far away from the part the tool will be when it retracts or repositions. It's actually still in the technology section where we control the movement of the tool. In this case, being a drill, it's really just moving in the Z direction, it's just drilling down that center line. So I still have my ability to do start and, and end like I would with other drilling operations. Here, it's work, it works basically the same. I can just click on start and choose a face, or I could have plugged in a value. I can click on drill end and click on the back face, or I could have put in a value. What I've done here is I actually clicked on those faces and made this operation associative to those faces. So now if the part changes in any way, if I go back to the original model and change the overall length of this part, uh, basically this toolpath will follow and update itself to start and end at those same faces. So because I've added that associativity indicated by the coloring, I actually want to go through the back a little bit more. So I've actually put in an incremental amount. I've put a negative 100 thou there so I can poke the drill further by, uh, past this face by 100 thou. Um, if I have an insert drill and I like to do a center shift, basically if the tool itself can drill a little larger, if I just move it away from the center a little bit, I have that center shift icon right here. And this is a drilling operation. It's looking at the shape and definition of my drill. So if I don't want to take the tip of the drill to that level, I'd like to actually do a full diameter at that level. I can click between cutter tip and full diameter, basically what you see in the left menu there, left icon. So if I leave it at cutter tip, I'm defining the tip of the tool to go to that level. If I put it at full diameter, I'm actually looking at the definition of my tool and telling it to take the full diameter of the tool as defined in my toolkit to that level. So what I've actually done here by adding that 100 thou is I've told it to go past the, the back end of the, of the hole by 100 thou and then actually also tip the tip of the drill through there as well. So I'm actually getting a full diameter, a 100 thou past that face. And that will help me later when I do anything like a part off or if I'm trying to face the other side or anything like that. It'll make sure I don't leave any kind of extra material that is going to be fully drilled out. If I had a countersinking drill and I'd like to actually only go as far into the part with my tool as possible to leave the, the uh, major diameter of the countersink, I can check the box for full diameter. And then based off my tool's definition, I can actually tell it what diameter I'd like to stop at. And it'll look at the shape of my tool and determine where to dip the tip of the drill to achieve that major diameter. But in this case, I'm just gonna go with full diameter. Okay, 
On the right side, according to your post, if you have different uh, drill cycles, you can choose them here. And for instance, right now we're on G81 in this tool, in this, uh, this post. It doesn't give me any data because G81 doesn't require any additional data. But G83, being a PEC, it needs to know my PEC. So once I click on any kind of cycle type that has additional information, I can click on data. And you can see that I can plug in additional information. And this will be based off whatever your post is looking for. If I leave the box checked for use cycle, it'll output it as the G83. If I, for whatever reason, need to break up the cycle or I don't have cycles on my machine, I can uncheck that box and it'll give me the long form of the code. In terms of link, we only have the right safety corner and the, and the right safety corner on the retract point, but you also have the ability here, if you don't want to waste time with going to certain areas like the right safety corner, you'd like to come from Z first or Z from previous or whatever the options are you're looking for to reduce your cycle time, you have them in both menus here. So if I just save and calculate that, which I've already done, we'll see the toolpath. is essentially just the drill coming down through the part. And if I give myself this cross-section view, we'll be able to see that. What we can also do is go into simulate. And in the turning module, this, the turning simulation is really just this profile view. It allows us to see the tool engaging the material. So in this case, I'm just taking my one inch drill and I'm drilling past that back face by 100 thou. So it went in, retracted, and re repositioned back to the right safety corner before it goes home. Now, on a lathe, this would be simply the way you would do the drilling. But let's say you have live tooling on this lathe, or you've got a mill turn, you're gonna use live tooling to drill this hole instead. Well, how do you handle that with still using the, um, the milling module, the, mill turn, the milling toolpath in the lathe module? Well, you can still have access to a milling drill tool, tool path like we had here. And for the details of that, again, I would refer you to the milling introductory series where I cover the drilling operation. But just for the basics of it, I'm basically doing it the same way. In this case, the geometry I've chosen is the center point, my part. I'm using the same drill, essentially the same levels. And in this case, I'm using G81 as well. So this is the same tool path, basically, It'll even look the same. It's really just going from there to there, drilling through the part. But the difference is going to be that the drilling operation from the turning operation list updates that turn profile we see in the turning simulation. There are two versions of the updated stock. They both update the main stock. If I bring this guy down here, I'm still drilling through that part, even if it's milling or turning version of that drilling operation. It still updates this version of the solid model, which you'll see in your solid verify. So if I go in to my solid verify, it still registers as being drilled. But if I go to the turning simulation, it'll be a little different because this is not a turning toolpath. So it doesn't get uh, it doesn't get represented in the turning simulation, which also means it doesn't update that turning simulation. So if it still thinks that stock is there and Operations in the turning module are updated stock recognition toolpath. If I take this inside turning operation and recalculate it, it doesn't know about that drilling from the milling operation. So it thinks it still has to start in the center line. It still thinks that there's still material in there, even though I've already drilled that hole out. So to account for that, anytime you're using live tooling, anytime you're using a milling operation on your mill turn, that is affecting that turn profile and you like it to inform the stock recognition turning operation, every milling operation has a checkbox that does that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into that milling drilling operation, we'll go to miscellaneous parameters, and we'll check the box that says update material boundary. By checking that box and recalculating, you'll see there's a little blue circle now on top of the drilling icon. With that one check box, that is going to update our turn profile. We go back into the turning simulation. We won't actually see it happen here if I do just a simple simulation. But what we will see is that it now updates the turning uh, internal turning toolpath that I have there. So to calculate that guy at the same time I calculated this, I could have just clicked on Save and Calculate Related Operations. That'll update any toolpath that comes after this one that is relying on the updated stock. So basically this one here. You can see that toolpath has now been updated. It recognizes that the milling drilling toolpath 
has done some something to the updated stock. And if we go to simulate our turning toolpath, we can see that it recognizes that the stock is there. So even though you take you can't use a milling operation in the turning simulation, if it has that updated material boundary option turned on, then it'll allow us to at least see the effect it had on the turn profile. So in this video, we've covered both types of drilling. In detail, we're talking about only the drilling from the turning operations menu, which is very simple. But if you have any live tooling that you're doing on your mill turn, if you're doing a live tooling drilling operation using the milling option, then just make sure you check that box for the update material boundary. Any questions of this or anything else from Solicam, just give us a call at 166-975-1115, extension 2. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this introductory series. Thanks for watching.